Hi, my name is Sammy Rodriguez and I'm a fine artist and illustrator. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration on how to create pixel art. What I usually do in my work, as you'll see in my course, I like to add secondary elements to faces. This is actually my first time trying to do like a pixelated uh, version of one of my completed illustrations. So I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to come out. So let's jump into it. Open the document here. I'm going to have a reference photo. What I want to show you, how to make a pixel art based on something like a photo reference. So I'm going to use a piece that I've already done that's actually from my Domestica course. Um, so here is my blank document. On one side of the screen, on the other side of the screen, I have my photo reference, which is the illustration I did. The thing about pixel, the way to think about it, is you're almost squinting your eye at the photo reference and just taking what the major shapes are. So you'll see here in the process. And so I'm just gonna be looking at this. I'm gonna try to match the background color a little bit. So I'll do that. And then I'm just gonna start, I go to a hard airbrush. The people who design video games, like especially the retro look, they have programs for that, but for me, because I'm using sort of pixel art combined with art that has curvature, I like to have it on one application. So this is kind of like a quick way to approach it. A lot of pixel art is based on that. And since we're just doing the look of pixel art, we're not actually programming a video game. It doesn't have to be like completely accurate. It's more just like for the edges that we see there, which in pixel art is more, most, it's pretty much like tiling that you see so it's like they're just a bunch of squares so I'm just gonna fill this in so I might need to use my paintbrush but I also might need to use my eraser first let me just do what I can with the paintbrush and then I'll switch my tool so now I got this messy sketch right and I'm gonna start adding the other elements I'm not worried about cleaning it yet For me, it's, uh, it's, I really like the aesthetic, and, but it's also um, quite humorous. And I think that's because my experience and attraction to it was originally through um, playing Nintendo in the 1980s and the 1990s. And that's what it reminds me, it's like a childhood memory for me. And one thing is you can actually bring your file in here and sample, because see, Procreate lets you sample. It's pretty cool though. I see a lot of illustrators sort of use this aesthetic mix with their work too, and I think that's great. Even see it on, in graffiti now. I see some graffiti art where like some of the edges of the graffiti, instead of being like a long curve, it'll just be like steps. That's kind of like how it is to practice in your studio and your sketchbook. It's like before you, you know, sort of discover your style, you have to like kind of put in time and effort into like developing what that is and like finding who you are. And so a lot of that is just doing little activities like this. Okay, so I got this funny shape right now. It's pretty much like the majority of the profile. And so I'm going to now start erasing into it so that it looks more like a pixel. Pretty much do this until it looks the way you want it to look. So I like to think of these as like steps, like on a stairwell. So you're just making these steps. Um, and you can really cut them anywhere you want. So I'm matching this grid line. One thing that you should know is that um, this right here that I chose, that's in the canvas, that's in this actions category. You, you click on this little tool icon, you go to canvas and then it says drawing guide and then there's your drawing guide, it's a grid. And I'm just gonna keep on like chipping away at what I have until this looks like the, what I'm trying to achieve. Sometimes you don't know what you're trying to achieve until you actually experiment with it. One thing I should say is you, you can make these all in separate layers. 
I like it to be, even though I like working digital, I still like to maintain some of the rules that I had when I used to work um, analog, which is um, pretty much an analog piece is just one layer. So you just keep adding and subtracting on that one layer. If you're somebody who wants to do several la layers, that can also inform your work and that can be something that you think is what makes you who you are. The reason why I uh, might or might not is because I have the option. And you can like, um, based on all of these activities I showed you, you can continue on this and like add the pattern or you can start adding shades to the face. I kind of want them to stand out as simple as possible. So I'm not rendering the shades, but if you wanted to, like see from far away, I just want them to look like, you won't know if, if it's a figure unless you've seen the original. It looks kind of loose and funny, but um, it's just to give you an idea of like how to approach it. And as I said before, you can um, spend more time in, on this by um, taking some of these um, activities like cutting back in with the steps, um, creating new layers. But um, this is pretty much like how I approach turning my typography or abstract symbols or other ele secondary elements into pixel art. If you want to learn more about me and my process, check out my course on Domestica, which can be found in the link below.